What's up, Covenant Love? <laughs> Welcome to another amazing series that we're doing here. Um, and this week, this series, what we are going to be talking about is becoming. You know, my mom and dad, 31 years ago, it is, that's crazy, 31 years ago, <laughs> um, came to Fayetteville, North Carolina, and they prayed this prayer, God, give us a church that looks like heaven. And of course, we talk about it a lot. We talk a lot um, on Sunday mornings about what that means. We lean into that. Uh, we lean into that prayer because we believe that that is truly the heartbeat behind this house. We believe that the prayer of God, give us a church that looks like heaven is the driving force. It is our mission here as we move into the things that God has called us to do, that everything streams and flows from that prayer. And so this week, and as we go into the following weeks, we really want to, to ask ourselves the question of, what does it look like to become a church that looks like mm. heaven? What are the stories? What are the teachings? What are the doctrinal threads? What are some of the core values and core things that really led us towards becoming a church that looks like heaven? And honestly, we believe that we are continuing to become oh, yeah. a church that looks like heaven uh, as we continue in the years until Jesus comes back of leaning into that prayer. And so we really wanted to do this series and talk about how do we become a church that looks like heaven. And the first thing that we thought about whenever we started to dive into how did we do this, how are we doing this, obviously the first thing that popped up in our hearts and our minds was unity. Because mm -hmm. you cannot become a church that looks like heaven unless you are leaning into unity, unless you are leaning into, I mean, unity is so crucial to who God is when we look at the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit yeah. existing in unity with one mm -hmm. another. And then we get into the inhabitants of heaven and the unity of what they're doing and how they're mm -hmm. around the throne. And so I just wanted to start this off with asking the question of how has unity played into us becoming a church that looks like heaven? Well, one of the first things is to understand and know that uh, one day uh, after we had moved to Fedville in 1991, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was in my prayer time and just really pouring in my heart out to God yeah. and um, saying, God, number one, what do you want for covenant love? Mm. What, what, do, what do you desire? What do you want to see? Because I want your purpose. You know, I want your plans you know, I want your direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I said, basically, where do you want me to start? And so that day, my daily Bible reading, which is so funny how this works Amazing. out. <laughs> um, my daily Bible reading that day was in Revelation, the seventh chapter, mm -hmm. um, beginning with verse nine. Yeah. And so, and l let me just read that to you. It said, after these things, I looked and behold, a great multitude, which no one can number, of all nations. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that word nations is ethnos, ethnos. in the Greek. Uh, and, and it means all races of people, mm -hmm. all of humanity. Mm -hmm. And it says, <clears throat> of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palm branches in their hands, and crying out, with a loud voice saying, and they're all saying the same thing. They knew exactly wow. yeah. what to say. Yeah. And it said, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And so that's the scripture that that day when I read that, it exploded on the inside of my heart. Yeah. And I know that uh, what came in was, you know, the Lord dropping in my heart. And I went immediately and told her, and I said, God wants us to have a church that looks exactly like hev heaven. Mm. At, at that time, uh, there there were, honestly, in Fayetteville, there were no integrated churches. Wow. That that uh, when we made that decision uh, to, to, to do that, and we both prayed, and we asked God to give us a church like heaven. Yeah. And I'll never, I'll never forget this, because <clears throat> after we had prayed, um, I went back to my office, and as I was going back to my office, the Lord again dropped in my heart and said, that's what I prayed 
before I went to the cross. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh my gracious. <laughs> and he said, son, mm. he said, unity is the purpose for my body. Unity through right. me is what right. my father desired for us to have to be one, mm. yeah. to overcome all the strife, all the schisms, all the factions, uh, you know, all the division. Yeah. He, 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 he went to the cross so we could be one. And he said, he said this in John 17, 20 and 23, I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only, because he had already prayed for his disciples that he yeah. was right. with. So, he, so he's now he's going into the future. He said, but also for all of those who will ever believe and trust in me through their message, that they may be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, mm. that they also may be one in us so that the world, and this is what got me. Yeah. Yeah. That, you, you know, I have people all the time saying, well, how is the world going to believe that Jesus is real? It says yeah. it right here. Mm. He says, and it has to do with unity, has to do with one, you know, loving each other. So it says, so the world may believe without any doubt, this is the Amplified Bible, without any doubt that you sent me. I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me that, watch this, that they may be one just as we are one. Hmm. I in them, you in me, that they may be perfected and completed into one so that the world may know without any doubt that you sent me. He's repeating himself hmm. again. And that you have loved them. This is a key. You have loved them just as you have loved me. Wow. <laughs> so, so that all of a sudden, if... If we are to be one like Jesus, yes. yeah. then unity, therefore, Jesus had a purpose, and he had oneness of purpose. Yeah. So to me, unity is oneness of purpose. Mm. Yeah. And that purpose has to tie in with the truth. It has to tie in with God's will or to, to, to the Word of God, which is his truth. So unity is oneness of person, but it is not sameness of persons yeah. or trying to make people the same. Yeah. It is oneness of purpose. Yeah. I love how Jesus was uh, praying to the Father for this, yeah. right? So he was already, you know, accomplished the will of God and he's at that point of transition, you know, going into heaven. And so the import of those words, of course, are just like immeasurable. Sure, yeah. uh, but he prayed to the Father for mm. this to occur. Mm. So here's the Word of God asking the Father for His assistance, for this to be released from <laughs> the point of His transition, mm. that that just as, the the just as love, I call it, you know, that mm. He was experiencing, that He was praying for His disciples and those who followed after the disciples, that there would be a way to recognize, yeah. right, uh, the love of the Father, which was the, the mission of Jesus, was to... Show the love of the Father and to and to restore back to the Father that which was His, all yeah. of creation, right? Yeah. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue. So when you think about <clears throat> the process that there, that we're in right now at Covenant Love, is that we know that the enemy is going to go against the image. Yes. Uh, our personal image, but our image as the body of Christ being one, right? Mm. So he will want to intervene with schisms and factions and all of that working within us. Because here's the thing. If we are demonstrating, right, the love yeah. of God, it's one thing to say. Yeah. It's one thing anybody can say. Yeah. I love you. I love God. Yeah. But if we're demonstrating that by the choices that we get to, to lean in and appreciate, to love and honor one another, that means that people out here are going to be able to see the image of God yeah. in our oneness. Yeah. And we can achieve it on our own. We have to ask for the power of God. You know, even in marriages, even in friendships, we have to, we, you know, we just don't even have it humanly within yeah. ourselves to accomplish it on our own. So I love reflecting back on what Jesus said. But here's what divisions do in my mind is that that actual word, um, in the unity is actual as an actual like antithesis of uh, tearing apart 
So if you uh, thought about if I had an image of Jesus Christ, his body, yeah, mm-hmm. and if we allow the enemy to come in and to tear and to bring schisms to us, mm-hmm. what kind of picture does that leave to the world? That's you know, so why yeah. would we want to necessarily be brought into that? We have enough brokenness in our own lives if yeah. we're outside of the body of Christ. Yeah. So again, who's the enemy? Yeah. The enemy sees the power of us walking around as representatives, image bearers of the oneness, the unity, that kind of just as love yeah. amongst ourselves. He is terrified of that. Yeah. But he can come in so craftily and just say, well, if you vote these different ways or if you know if I have tattoos and you don't or all of those right. things that just they're silly you know uh, yeah. they should not because it's not the it's not um, the bigger issues which are are we be allowing ourselves to be transformed that's into so the good. image of Christ and that's a daily work yeah that's so good I think the question that automatically pops up in my mind is um, I know that we've heard this question a lot and you guys have heard this question a lot of when we start to talk about our differences or what makes us different. Mm. Um, I think it's important to understand the difference between like a schism or um, something that would divide us versus the things that make us unique. You know, I love your definition, Dad, of, of oneness is not, or unity is, the beauty of unity is not in uniformity. It is in diversity. And so how do we... How have we and how do we continue to, as a church, celebrate our differences Mm. without allowing the enemy to come in and make those differences division? Because I think something that we have all experienced is (laughs) like, even when you come into church, you have people that think children's ministry. This is a very, very, very small dialed down version of this idea. But you have people come in and they're like, pastor. It's all about children's ministry. It's completely about children's ministry. Everything we do needs to be focused on children's ministry. And then you have people where it's like, no, it's all about our evangelistic teams. It's a, it's all about yeah. the people that are going out into the street our and missions. they're and the, it's missions or it's <laughs> this. It's 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 youth ministry. It's, it's the worship ministry. It's the word. It's the you know. And so we have all these people that get really excited about these individual things because. That's something that makes them unique and different within the body of Christ. But how do we make sure that we keep in our hearts where it's like we value everything? Mm. Now, that's a dumbed down version of when we come in and we say white culture is different than black culture and black culture is different than Hispanic culture and Hispanic culture is different than and the way that one person votes is different than in the way that another person votes and the yeah. way that one person thinks that we should do something in the community is different than so how do we celebrate mm-hmm. those differences and not allow them to be tools in the hands of the enemy to create division within the church well one of the one, one of the main um, thrusts of a church is it is to do the will of God yeah. The, the okay. purpose of God's yeah. will. So, again, unity is not trying to uh, get people to be the same. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, and the Bible is very clear concerning <laughs> the body, the fingers, yeah, the nose, yeah, the yeah. ear, so and, and the ear can't parts. say to the nose or can't say to the toe, you know, why aren't you like me? So you have the multiplicity yes. of ministries with inside of a church but now the key there is, and this is the, this is the thing that the Lord has shown me through the years. Um, the key is not is not necessarily uh, celebrating just one culture. Right. It is it is not it is not taking one nation ethnos mm-hmm. and elevating and it, elevating it yeah. above others. Yeah. It is, we're all equal. We are all one. I mean, Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 11 through 19, is very clear concerning, again, unity mm-hmm. and becoming one in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. So so here's what you're trying to do. So you're endeavoring, uh, le- by the leading of the Holy Spirit, is that you're not trying to make people the same. Mm-hmm. You're not trying to get them to... Uh, to have just 
one particular area that right. is the whole church, right? right. One purpose. Right. Yeah. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get the people, all people who come, mm -hmm. you're trying to get them on the same page yes. mm -hmm. with the same goal yeah. and the same purpose yes. mm -hmm. going after the same thing which has to tie in with the will of God. Right. And what, once you get that purpose, mm -hmm. once you get everybody understanding that children's ministry, outreach ministry, yeah. Yeah. missions ministry, yeah. all, the the uh, discipleship, all of these working together yes. as as one, as 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 one has a goal, and the goal is in Ephesians the fourth chapter where it says <laughs> to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Yeah. That and then I just read it where Jesus said that they may be one, that they may be thoroughly equipped and complete mm -hmm. yes. and perfected. Now, how do we do that? We, of course, we know we do that with the Word of God. Uh, but yet, what we have to do is you can't just come in and say, well, I think this culture should be in this church or that culture. It's all of the cultures coming yes. together yes. Yes. with one focus, and that is worshiping God yeah. and, and, and getting the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And then from that, all the unique differences, yes. all the unique giftings. And here's what we need to see is it's the giftings. Because one person is going to say, it's all about children. Yes, it is. But in the concept of the whole, in the right. scope of the whole of the church, that God has put this in my heart to be in children's ministry. Yeah. So so let me just say this to both of y'all. Let me throw this out because it's perfect because now you have two children. <laughs> okay? So what you're, what you're endeavoring to do, because you have two children that are different. Entirely. So entirely different. Okay. <laughs> so so and and then you are married, two different personalities. Yeah. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to get everybody on the same page, yes. on the schedules, yeah. on the things that you are setting up yeah. that yeah. you know that God's put Those in your mission, heart. Your goal. Yeah. your goal, your your missions. Uh, to do that, and that's not the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, one one of the things that we forget in discussing unity mm -hmm. is that you can you start out and you're excited about it, and you have the diversity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but but it is work yep. to maintain to be intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. to maintain that unity. So I was thinking about as we we're talking, um, what is like? How do you? be come together how do you be and you, you know how are you do you actually work that out in unity and the the word that popped in my mind was connection mm -hmm. because i think when you connect with people you're you're seeing that other person and you're being seen by the other person and so the example i thought of was um recently about a couple weeks ago um an arabic family moved into our neighborhood right across oh, the street okay. from us and i have three kids and i, I went over and said hello and everything, and uh, I was very pregnant at that point, and so they were. We were talking about that, and then a couple of weeks later, I brought Haven over, and talk about cultural differences. He grabbed Haven out of my arms and <laughs> gave her a big old kiss, and told his daughter to go in Arabic. Told her to go and tell her mother that she was here. You know, the baby was here, and then she he handed her to to the mom, and uh, and it was just, and being in Mexico, it actually was not shocking to me. I really enjoy. Mm experiencing cultures like that and I brought uh, a little gift over then a couple weeks later they brought food over to our house about a week later mm -hmm. and the key to me saying all of this is you know obviously very opposite they're different cultures I wouldn't say opposite but just different cultures yeah. um, a particular culture that I haven't had much experience you know we went to to Mexico and we have a lot of um, reference point for Hispanic culture and I told him because she doesn't speak a lot of English. I wish she could just speak Spanish because then I could connect and relate mm. and talk. Yeah. Um, but the key behind all of that was um, we were looking up ways that would demonstrate um, respect or oh, honor yeah. to their culture. And yeah. one of the things it said was gift giving, um, gift giving or it said things that represent who you are, that you are you know, giving a gift that would represent your culture and that they could give you a gift that represent theirs. So it's the seeing and being seen. Yeah. And so I think like the biggest thing with unity, like I could come up to a stranger and say, 
I, I want to be in unity with you. Like, I met you at Covenant Love. Let's right. be in unity. <laughs> like, like, what? <laughs> that sounds really super spiritual, you know, yeah. but actually the unity, the, yeah. the, the working out yes. of the unity is the connection. It's let me see into your world. Let me understand why children's ministry yeah. is so important to you. Let me get excited with you, even if I'm never going to be in children's ministry. Yeah. Or let me see why it's so important that these, you know, matter, these political issues matter to you. Let me ask you questions about that and understand and yeah. hear your heart so and good. hear the experience you had as a little girl, the traumatic thing that made it so that that was, you know, from that day forward, you saw that that mattered in the world, you know, or, or things like that. And so um, I just, I love what you're talking about with the body of Christ being you know, we don't want it to be shredded off pieces and div divisions, but the only way to achieve that is through um, unity, and that comes through connection. Yeah. You know, even as Christians and our relationship to Christ, you know, we know in part, but we're welcomed, we're invited mm -hmm. into know Him and to know no. Him more and to know mm -hmm. Him more. How much more in the body of Christ would right. that be the way that we would really grow in the unity of our faith is mm. by mm. growing to appreciate the passions and the diversity because yeah. we only know what we know. Yeah. And exactly. so, like you said, to walk across the street and to know that one thing you had in common is that your parents mm -hmm. and then that mom, even though y'all can't speak the same language, she loves being a mommy and just the, the beauty that came out of that encounter and then mm. the resulting things that gave y'all opportunity to know, to know. more yeah. and that what you did behind the scenes was to just find out okay how can I show to that culture yes. that we really truly care that yes. we're not just kind of doing a you know check off oh I visited my neighbor kind of thing yeah. But yeah I love that so good well and I think one of the things well while everybody was talking the thing that came up in my mind and I want to ask a question about this too is I think sometimes to find that connection we have to sacrifice our own comfort Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, when yes. I, becoming a church that looks like heaven, <laughs> yeah. having all of the different ethnicities, I think something that we have constantly found to be true is you often gravitate towards the people who look like you, talk like you, have the same customs that you have. Yeah. It's, it's because natural. it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's, just it's very natural. And Our brain so, actually functions that way yeah. to find commonality. Right. And so in what ways... You know, how do we sacrifice those comforts? Like, how do we step out in, in a selflessness act Ooh, of so connecting with one another so that we can truly become that unified body that is unified but also not uniform? Yeah, I, I think that one of the things that we actually need to have an understanding of is what is the purpose of a local church? Mm. Why, why are we here? What, what is the existence? Is it just to show up on Sunday? Right. You know, uh, what do we do? You know, or why am I actually here? Why did God lead yeah, me that's here? Good. Yeah, that's really good. You know, uh, what, what is his purpose and will for my life inside this local church? And we have to realize that the local church becomes that representation yeah. Yeah. of the purpose of God when Jesus said that they may be one so that the world will know. But in that oneness that we have, that everybody has different giftings. Mm. And as you get involved inside the local church, yeah. It's amazing that you say, "Well, I, I man, I, I just love to teach children. I, I want to, I want to help, or I want to get involved with the youth, or I want to do outreach, or media. gosh, I would love to greet people. I'd love to be in media. I'd love to be in worship. Uh, yeah. You know, those things. There's, there's so many different areas. The young adults. I would like to be a part of that. So what happens? is that when you intentionally, and you yeah. have to intentionally have do to. this. Yeah, mm -hmm. prioritize. You know, yeah, Proverbs says, he who wants to, uh, to, to uh, he who wants to have friends must be friendly himself. Mm -hmm. That's really good. So yeah. you, you, you can't just say, well, I want to have friends. Why don't people come up to me mm -hmm. type of thing? But here's the key, because it can be <laughs> in a church our size. It can be a little bit scary. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and I'm just talking about how people have said this to me. Um, but then I've had those same people come to me and say, you know what? I got involved in this ministry. 
I have met some of the coolest people, yeah. and, you know, in doing that. Unlikely friendships. It's so yeah. fun that you yeah. say that all yeah. the time. Well, yeah. one, I just I want to attach this story to what you're saying is, is um, a couple of months ago, we had someone who was interested in coming and visiting our church. Um, and this was a, a white gentleman. And he was he had just grown up in a white church his whole life in a white community his whole life. And he, he was honest, you know, he said, I'm terrified of stepping outside of my culture. And the interesting thing is, is that he called the church office because he wanted to talk about this. And he actually (laughs) ends up talking on the phone with pastor John, who is obviously he's an African American pastor with us here. He's betting his concerns. (laughs) And so he's on the phone, he's on the phone and he's, he's this, this white gentleman, he's on the phone with pastor John and he says, you know, if I can just be honest, like, please don't <laughs> judge me. But if I could just be honest, like, I've I've never been in a church with so many different cultures, and, and that kind of worries me. So Pastor John is kind of giggling because he's like, I wonder if this guy can tell <laughs> by my voice that. or not or anything. Um, and the guy ends up coming to church and realizing, oh, Pastor John is actually an African-American guy. <laughs> I and, I, and he just approached me with so much love and approached me with, but I think about that of, he had to step out of his comfort zone. Mm-hmm. He had to be intentional. I'm going to make this call. I'm going to I'm going to risk making a fool of myself even and risk, you know, the opportunity of someone to judge me to say, "Hey, I'm actually uncomfortable with this. So how do I move forward That's in so it?" Good. And to have that meeting place be, hey, you know, that it was actually two different ethnos coming together to have that moment of like, hey, this is uncomfortable, but it's okay. Like, this is what God wants for us. This is um, God's desire. It actually makes me think about Philippians 2, how it says that Jesus Jesus stepped down out of his heavenly culture. Right. You know, he stepped right. down out of what was comfortable for him. And, yeah. you know, he put on flesh. And the way that he did that was he didn't consider it robbery. He didn't. He didn't consider his own comfort. He didn't consider himself. Shoot. He actually yeah. put the needs of humanity above his own opportunity, which, you know, God will never be selfish, but he had to selflessly step out into our culture, into our world, put on our flesh, put on mm-hmm. our culture, put on all of that, and literally live in that place with us and to become one with us and for that for that for there to be that unity there and now we can step into that because he stepped into that yes. you know and so i just i think it's such an interesting thing of to realize it just it really does take that selflessness it takes that that act of saying i'm not going to be comfortable i'm going to be intentional and i'm going to step forward and i'm going to lean into other cultures and other thought processes around me so that we can be unified and become a church that looks like heaven. Right. Well, can, I'm sorry. Yep. Just, mm-hmm. So uh, the whole time you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, um, uh, Christ was very missional mm. in his purpose for coming. He even talks about it at the end of, of his life mission here on the planet. You know, he said, I came and this is what I was called to do and this is what I accomplished. And so in that, in light of what you have just said, uh, I, I love the fact that, you know, the things that um, it, that make up our mission and our vision, our values here at Covenant Love are not just things on placards. Because what Whew. we've heard for years That's is so that good. out in our community right here at Covenant Love, mm. in addition to church family that love to be invested with the things <laughs> that they're passionate about, see, that's amazing. Um, but they're also missional. And so when in any time that we mm. invite people that we get a chance to get in conversation with out in community mm. and, you know, the Holy Spirit sets us up to be able to invite them to come and be in a body, uh, be, in a, be in a church service where they would be seen and valued, celebrated, all those things. It, it very rarely do we ever hear people not realize that we're from Covenant Love. They may not know anything about us, but the folks here, the family here at Covenant Love are very missional and they're not trying to do it because it's on our t-shirt. It's because, you know, it's because of who we are. And that so as they are loving out in community, which is really, to me, one of the chief things um, that 
we get the opportunity to do, in addition to serving inside of our church family, is to be Jesus with skin on out there mm. in the world. So if if it's somebody that's serving us at a table or somebody that we meet in line at Walmart or whatever, it's so cool to hear that uh, the church family is already out there loving on people. So that's they're so like, good. oh, yes, I think I want to go experience that because inside of four walls because mm. I've experienced it out here outside of the four walls. Mm. Yes. Really and and I think also that uh, <clears throat> with that and what you were saying is, is that, uh, again, the differences that we have, that we may have come out of a place right. of thinking to ourselves, well, you know, I, I just don't feel like that I have anything to give. I don't have, I I don't feel like that, you know, I I am that important Mm. or that I have the ability to get out and and help. And I I think the enemy uses that a lot to keep people from stepping up to do something. Mm -hmm. I I think one of the most incredible scriptures in the Bible uh, is in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, when you where, where it talks about the fivefold ministry, yeah. and it talks about the purpose of the fivefold ministry, yeah. uh, which basically is the purpose of the local church. Yeah, when you look at it, but then when you get down yes. to the last scripture, it says the body grows by each part doing, doing its it. part. Yes, okay. serving. Yes, and the body grows. That is one of the most amazing things to me. So, if you have, if you have everybody stepping up Mm. to understanding that yes number one god has put me in this local church not only to be discipled not only to learn but to develop relationships with people who actually love me who will accept me for exactly who i am not saying that any church is perfect oh my gracious no (laughs) church is perfect and (laughs) and to know that every church along with its uh members are in process. We're yeah. all yeah. at a certain place growing in in, in yes. areas. But a lot of times what happens is that uh, people will allow offense mm. or something has happened yeah. to, oh gosh, well, you know, this is not a perfect church. Right. I, and, and, and it's mm. not. Mm. It's just all of us with our weaknesses yeah. With our flaws, yeah. yes. you know, Jesus in us is not flawed, no. but at the same time, being in process, so we good. we have weaknesses. You know, we have flaws, but mm. it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I do have, mm. like the little widow with the oil. What do I have? Yeah, you know, I'm going to take what I do have and I'm going to get involved with that. Mm. And it's amazing that once I step up and get involved yeah. to bring about the overall growth of the church uh, and to get on the same page and purpose and saying, this is, this is, this is what the church is here for and they need me. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. We need everybody. We do. There mm. is nobody yeah. that is non-essential. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is essential. Yeah. Uh, and, exactly. and people think, well, just a little bit. I'll never forget the lady came up to me and she said, well, I, I don't know what to do because I, I don't have a lot of giftings in, or, or maybe talents like so many people do. And I looked at her and she's sitting there and she's smiling. And I said, you have one of the most beautiful smiles I've ever seen. Yeah. I said, yeah. do you know how many people are walking through those doors that have had a hard week that mm. need to see your beautiful smile? Mm. And I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, they need to see your beautiful smile. Mm. And she said, really? <laughs> she said, my smile will help somebody? I said, absolutely. I said, why don't you go and get involved with the greeters? That lady did. She has been for like 10 years <laughs> greeting inside inside that place and this one lady two weeks after i never forget she came to me two weeks after she was sitting there greeting or Mm -hmm. at the front door saying good morning good to see you you know with that smile this person walked by and then turned around and said your smile just helped me thank you so much (laughs) It, it, just to confirm. Yeah, yeah that, just confirm. God, just yes. a smile. Yes. You know, but so but there's so many different yeah. areas. And, yes. and, and and if we would just quit selling ourselves short, mm-hmm. yeah. 
if we would keep our minds from condemning us mm. and realize I'm a part of this whole thing yeah. of seeing more people saved. I mean, my grace is Sunday morning. All, the altar is packed out with young people. You know, everybody getting involved. Unity. People come in. Uh, all of our international students, they have said this for years yes, when yes. they come in. They just start weeping. They, they do. They said, yeah. we, the love like, that's in this they're place. They're experiencing yeah. love. The, yeah. and 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 that is what that is the foundation yeah. for unity so i mean the foundation of unity is the cross yeah that brings That's us true. all on the same ground yeah. right there the cross and it makes us all equal every yeah. human being and so uh so when we when we come into the local church and we know that god has sent us here yeah you know and and we tell people all the time we want God's will for your life. Exactly. You know, we yes. want you to pray, make sure that God has sent you here. But then if God has sent you here, you know, some people come and they've, they're coming out of hurts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and we say to them, be healed. Take your time if you need yeah, to. Yeah, take your time. Get healed. But don't stay in the nursing home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the question is for each person, you know, no matter what area they might get in, involved, I think the first question is, how? what is it that I uh, feel like I can do that would express the love of God? Yeah. You know, down at the, like the, the most uh, essential basis is what can I do to express the love of God? Um, I just had a conversation with a woman that has been a part of Covenant Love for probably 20 plus years, mm -hmm. and she just hadn't quite found that area that she felt that she was um, really like born to do because she mm. could do that. We can all do chores, right? But to really get mm. into something that suited what she loved to do that would she would get excited about expressing Jesus's love in this way. Yeah. So I was saying to her, I said, you know what I've noticed is that when you write, you are such an exhorter. You are able mm. to express the value of the person you're writing mm. to. And you seem like you just really value cards, like written cards. Because we're used to emails and texts, but man, how many times have we got a card and we've never said, oh, this was not perfect timing. Instead, it's like, this is perfect timing. I need mm -hmm. to hear this. Anyway, my point is, for her, she necessarily didn't see that as a ministry, but I'm saying, man, this yeah. could be such a ministry. Yeah. And and it seems small to you, but it is a way for God's love to be seen. That's so good. Experienced. So yeah. I think that's the bottom I, line. From what you were saying, Pastor Dad, just like the whole pitch idea of like we don't have to do it all or be it all. We just have to yes. be us and do our part. Exactly. And, and like realizing it's not uh, honest. I feel like it's a discovering because it's not yeah. that when you That's come good. in that you are uh, figuring out how to be the hand. Actually, God already predestined you to be you the are, hand. You are, yes. You are the hand. It's not that you're, you know, a subpar like what you were saying. It's actually that we all get to celebrate and go, oh, I, you know, it's like they're thinking, maybe I am a hand. And then everybody else around them echoes you are a hand. I see you're a hand. You go yeah. out there and be a hand. Be you a know, hand. be a hand. And so, but it's funny because I feel like it's a it's yeah. a dual thing. Like we're coming yeah. in and we're able to be the mirror to each other and yeah. celebrate. Like I love what you said is that we underrate ourselves because we don't see who we are, but then we get to get around the other people and be the reflection for other people and call them yeah. up and say, this is who you were all along. And now yeah. that you're here and thriving and healthy, then you get to be what you're supposed to be. be. Yeah. It's not yeah. about it's doing. doing. It's not. Yeah. It's being. And yeah. then yeah. doing. Yeah. And follows. remember what the and remember what the the great incredible apostle Paul who wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Remember what he said. He said, "Oh wow, I got this revelation. Now I understand it. When I'm weak, yeah, that's when I'm Yay. strong. Yes. And he was These talking about the grace of God." that yeah. empowered him. And I, a lot of times we forget it's God's grace on yeah. us. We look right. at ourselves instead of looking at God's grace to empower us to be able to do, to yeah. live into unity, to walk yeah. in love, to do those things. And and when we understand that, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, I think if I could conclude all of this, because we are <laughs> out of time. So if I could conclude all of this, it would be that you need to to walk in unity and to become a church that looks like heaven. You need to embrace your own uniqueness 
and you need to embrace the uniqueness of those around you. And I think we can probably even get a little bit more into that next week. Mm -hmm. But we love you guys so much. Thank you for coming and tuning in to the Becoming series. And we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Becoming series. Before we close out this episode, I just remind you that shows like the Becoming series are only possible because of your generous giving. Here at CL, we are not only reaching people locally in Fayetteville, North Carolina, but shows like Masterclass, PrayerCast, or CL Talks have been able to reach people all around the world. Because of your giving, we are able to continue creating shows like this that are available for anyone, anywhere to view at any time. So thank you, CL, for being such a generous church. You can give easily by going to the CL app and click the Give button on the bottom of your screen. From there, you'll be taken to a screen where you can easily type in the amount you would like to give. You can also go to mycl.church slash give anytime to see all the many ways that you can give. There is so much happening at CL, and we want to make sure that you are staying connected with us. The best way to do so is to download the CL app. There you can find events, messages, and even watch more shows like the Becoming series. Here at Covenant Love, we are becoming a church that looks like heaven. And one of the many ways we become together is through our prayer rooms. All the times the prayer room is open are on the screen now. The prayer room is open on campus and takes place in the Building C Arc. We would love to see you out on campus anytime the prayer room is open. Whether you can join us for 30 minutes or two hours, we would love to see you there. Looking for more content like this? Head over to our YouTube channel anytime to find more of the Becoming series, as well as so much more content just like it. Go ahead and subscribe so you will be notified anytime we upload a new episode. Well, family, that's it for this episode of the Becoming series. We'll see you right back here next time.